Hey everybody, Dan here, and today I want to talk about the founders and healthcare. So, when we think about this notion of healthcare, is it a right or a privilege? One of the things we need to look at is what our founders thought. So, it's useful in history to look at old documents and uh, use these documents as evidence to try to get us inside of the heads of uh, the founding fathers, if you will. So that's what we're gonna do in this module. So the two documents we're gonna look at in this module, one of them is the Declaration of Independence and the other is the U.S. Constitution. And it's, it's, it's a useful exercise because when the framers or the founders were thinking about the rights put forth in the Constitution, perhaps we can look at the Constitution and, and find some clues to as what they were thinking. So, you know, one of the things I always disliked about history was this notion that we had to remember dates and places and documents and that sort of thing. And um, I, I'm not really a fan of that, and I know most students aren't really a fan of that either. But in this case, there are two things I want you to remember. Most of you already know this from U.S. history, if you had it in uh, high school perhaps. But the two documents we're going to look at today, one of them is the Declaration of Independence from 1776, and the other one is the U.S. Constitution. Constitution, um, which is from 1787. So first of all, let's kind of talk about these documents and what they are. The Declaration of Independence is exactly what it sounds like it is. It is. It's, a, it's actually a declaration of war. And if you recall your American history, in 1776, the 13 colonies were not yet the United States. They were 13 colonies, and they were colonies of England at the time. So um, as things started to happen in the colonies in the late 1700s, you may have heard of uh, this idea of taxation without representation and uh, other rights violations that the English Parliament um, uh, compelled upon the citizens of the colonies, um, the t tensions were building be between the colonists and the mother country, England, if you will. So um, what happened is, and again, this isn't a full history lesson, but what happened is the colonies eventually rose up and said, hey, we want to be independent of England, and that's where the Declaration of Independence comes in, in 1776, which the result of the Declaration of Independence is, of course, the War for Independence, uh, also known as the Revolutionary War. But we're not going to get into that because it really has nothing to do with health care. But what we do want to do is we want to look at the documents to try to get inside the heads of the framers. So the Declaration of Independence, written in 1776, by Thomas Jefferson was a declaration of war and it was basically a letter that was written that would go to Parliament and to King George III telling them basically, hey, we want to split up with you. We don't want to be part of England anymore. So that's what the Declaration of Independence is. It's a famous historical document. And it's useful to look at the preamble of the Declaration of Independence. And the preamble is really the introduction or the beginning section of the document. So the preamble of the Declaration of Independence reads as follows. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So after looking at the preamble, we learn a couple of things. We learn this idea that the founders felt there were unalienable rights, which means basic human rights that everybody, um, uh, that everybody has. So when you think about that and you think about the notion of unalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, it really doesn't say in the text that you have the right to health care. Uh, but it does say that you have the right to the pursuit of happiness. So you can extrapolate your own ideas from there if, if they were talking about uh, citizens having the right to good health or not. So that's something we'll think about as we go through this module. So um, you go through the classroom notes or the module three notes in this case and the preamble's in there and you can read it again if you want. Uh, but I want you to think about that and how you interpret that might imply as far as uh, the right to health care. When we're considering this question, is health care a right or privilege? Certainly we can think about it 
in the context of the preamble of the Declaration of Independence. So the next thing we're going to look at is the U.S. Constitution. Now, the Constitution, I guess, for lack of a better word, is, is really uh, more important of a document than the Declaration of Independence because the Constitution is a living document. It's still in place today, and it's really the, the framework. It spells out how our government is set up. It, it talks about the, the three branches of government and how they work together. Uh, the Bill of Rights is the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. So the Constitution is a living document. We debate it all the time. In our last module, when we talked about the ACA, uh, we talked about whether or not it was constitutional or unconstitutional. So I, I guess, for lack of a better word, the Constitution is sort of a bigger deal than the Declaration of Independence. And it's interesting because prior to the Constitution, there was no such thing as the United States of America. It didn't exist. And uh, the Constitution was written by James Madison in 1787. And the idea behind the Constitution was to form a stronger central government. And there's a, there's a bunch of nuances when we talk about the formation of a strong central government. Um, think about this. During the Revolutionary War, the writing of the Declaration of Independence, one of the things the colonists were opposed to was strong central government because they had lived through the tyranny of King George III, they lived through the tyranny of the Parliament, and the last thing the founders wanted was an, an overreaching or overbearing central government because that's what they were trying to get away from in England. So keep that in the back of your head uh, when you're thinking about the Constitution and what it means. At the same time, the framers also knew that they had to form a federal government because there were certain things that the colonies needed to come together on. For example, um, um, uh, federal taxes to raise money to pay for the Revolutionary War. Prior to the Constitution, there, was, there were the Articles of Confederation, but, but there wasn't really a structure that allowed all the colonies to come together to contribute uh, towards uh, any sort of federal system. And, and, and really, a lot of this was about funding for the war. The colonies needed to get together and make sure that everybody contributed their fair share. They also needed to get together to form some sort of armed services so they could fight the British or fight future wars in a coordinated manner. So, so there was a need for some sort of federal government, and that is what prompted the writing of the Constitution in 1787. So after the writing of the Constitution in 1787, it was sent to all the colonies for ratification. And uh, there were a lot of debates. You may have heard about Federalists versus Anti-Federalists. We're not going to get into that right now. But suffice it to say that by 1788, the Constitution was ratified. That means all of the colonies accepted it and signed on to it. And it was to be effective in 1789. So really, the beginnings of the United States of America start in 1789 because the Constitution is the document that tells you how the country is going to be constructed. That's why the first president, George Washington, went into office in 1789 because in March of 1789, this new position of president, this new country of, of uh, 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 the United States of America was formed. So um, the Constitution is important, and I won't get into that in any more detail, but what I want to do is I want to read for you the preamble to the U.S. Constitution and then talk about that. So the preamble to the Constitution goes like this. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. So that's a lot to say, but let me pull something out of there that, that may be of interest. So one of the things it says is to promote the general welfare. And that's an interesting phrase in the preamble. And what I like to do, since we're talking about something that was written in 1787, is to go back to a dictionary from the 1780s or the early 1800s and figure out exactly 
how they defined words. And the one I want to key in on here is the general welfare. So what did welfare mean to people in the late 1700s? And there's a couple of different things we can look at. So one of the earliest dictionaries in the U.S. from 1755 was called Johnson's Dictionary. And if you look up the uh, definition of welfare in Johnson's Dictionary, you'll find that it means happiness, success, or prosperity. So promoting the general welfare in the case of the preamble, if we look at this definition, means promoting the happiness, success, and prosperity of citizens really doesn't give us too much of a clue on how they felt about health care. But if you look at Noah Webster's dictionary from about 10 years later, Noah Webster's dictionary defines welfare as exemption from misfortune, sickness, calamity, or evil, and the enjoyment of health and the common blessings of life. So if you use that definition of welfare, it specifically does mention this idea of exemption from sickness. So there's an implication there in the preamble that the founders were thinking about um, healthy citizens and citizens that were exempt from sickness. Again, it doesn't state, hey, we need to provide health care for our citizens, but it gives us a little insight so we can begin to interpret on our own what the framers may have meant when they said promoting the general welfare. The other thing that's interesting to look at, and many people have, if, if you look at 1798, uh, one of the early sessions of Congress, actually it was the fifth Congress that met, uh, in the fifth Congress in 1798, they passed an act for relief of sick and disabled seamen. And that was a, a health care plan for sailors, if you will, and it mandated a 1% tax uh, deducted from the payroll of, of merchant marines and sailors to fund some government hospitals uh, to promote health among sailors. So um, that kind of gives you an idea. It's a lot like the ACA federal mandate that sailors had to uh, contribute 1% of their income to fund a hospital and healthcare system. And one of the reasons this is probably important because you know this is long before airplanes, automobiles, uh, any kind of transportation uh, as we know it today. So merchant marines um, were really important to the economy of the U.S. All of the goods that were exported and imported, we depended upon a fleet of merchant marines to do that. And the government knew that it was a highly uh, risky venture. There was a lot of illness amongst people who were at sea and that it was important to keep um, seamen and sailors healthy in order to keep the economy healthy. So this gives you a little bit of insight into what the founders were thinking. It also tells you a little bit about what the Declaration of Independence was and what the Constitution was. And you'll learn more as you go through the reading notes in this module. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Keep up the good work. Bye-bye.